There it is. Hey, what's going on? We are live. It is, man, it's been a couple of weeks. I've lost a day. Ooh, happy 311, everybody. Chad Sexton and the crew, happy 311. Um, <laughs> uh, it is Brian from SecretsBeverageLab.com, and this is the one and only Seacoast Beverage Lab podcast for uh, Wednesday, March 11th, 2015. Rocking the Levin shirt today. Shout out to the, the boys and girls over at Levin. Uh, yeah, that's the only shirt I have right now that's... Uh, that's not washed because Newfields is out of water, but uh, we have plenty of beer here. So I am drinking the one and only Bissell Brothers Substance. Thank you to Carla um, from the Bissell Brothers Brewery. But we're gonna, there's a reason why I'm drinking that. I usually drink it every day, but there's a reason today why we're drinking it. Ben, you have water, right? Water's coming through your pipes just fine? The water's coming through our pipes just fine. Mm. So, uh no dysentery. No one's dying on some Oregon Trail shit over here. <laughs> yeah. Happy Pretty to be busy. here. Thanks, Damn time. Happy to sub in. Uh, I'm Ben Watts. You can uh, catch me at uh, at BM Watts or at Let's underscore Talk underscore Beer because we talk about beer sometimes. Nice. Uh, I'm drinking Lemurl over here in uh, in Maine. Cheers up to that. And I'm also repping 311 on 311 Day. Nice. Dig it. Oh, nice oh, shirt. It's that original logo from the from the uh, the self titled album. Hell yeah. yeah. You're goddamn right. <laughs> I'm a I'm a 37 year old man who still listens to 311. <laughs> I love you, Dad. Um, Carla, what's up? Hey guys, uh, Carla here, known online as Beer Babe. I uh, gave up all my precious substance to the boys, so I am actually drinking a somebody knows Hayseed, uh, one of their new releases. It's a Grisette. Uh Really digging on that beer right now. Nice. And as we were talking about before, uh, it looks like they took the Bud Light approach and put some scantily clad women on that label. Oh, yeah, totally. So, skinless ankle right there. I'm, oof, look at that. A lot of skin. A <laughs> lot of skin on that uh, thing. And, uh, and Carla's supporting 311. All the records behind her are all of their albums, right? No. No? All right. <laughs> <laughs> I have zero 311 back there. Sorry. 30, 30 Mumford and Sons and the rest. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, we have Sean Jansen. Welcome back, Honey Pop. How's it going? I'm Sean Jansen from TobeerGuys.com, and as you may or may not know, um, I did do not have any beer from Bizzle Brothers, as a co-host decided to drink the supply of it, and instead I am having a beer called Dirty Little Freak from Duclaw. Ooh, so wait, so are you calling me a dirty little freak, or is that just I'm something? I'm calling you a dirty little freak. God, that's and a that's it's a little bit in the show. And and just uh, I'll say. Yeah. Um, Don't tread on me, which is a, which is a title of a 311 song. Oh, did you just Google that? <laughs> that that's a deep track. <laughs> that's not even a. <laughs> Dear Google, no, that was a yeah. Anyway, but Sean, how what kind of beer is it? And how is it? And I haven't heard of it. It is. Um, I'll get back to you on that. Cool. Sounds good. Thanks for doing some research before the show. Uh, it's but, a stout. Or, with, it's a stout with vanilla bean. It, oh, okay. Awesome. And uh, so, yes, the, the, Carla brought me beer to give to Sean and possibly Ben for when we had this show. This, it was a month ago, and, and I got thirsty before going on vacation, so I apologize. But I am drinking the beer from the guests today. We have Peter and Noah Bissell. How's it going, boys? Good to have you from the Bissell Brothers Brewery. How's it going? Thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah. this is fun. Uh, what are you drinking? Um, I am double fisting a Lost Nation Goza. Nice. And Bissell Swish. Awesome. And I think it's, I just we got, got a bunch of stuff. With the Goza. <laughs> Sweet. Big and easy tonight. Yeah. Well, you're, I mean, it's it's as you guys know, you are a fan favorite of of the podcast. The, the viewers have been asking for you for a while, so we figured uh, we figured we let you blow up a little bit before we have you on on the show. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm I'm glad you guys got you know be, better beer in those tanks. I'm kidding, obviously I'm kidding, but uh, I appreciate you guys coming on. Um, let's um quick round. To, uh, it's been a couple of weeks. Does uh, Carla, Sean, or Ben have anything real quick they want to just say what happened the past couple of weeks? Um, I know Sean coming off of Portsmouth Beer Week. Did that go well? And, uh, Portsmouth Beer Week was great. There was over 45 events across 10 days. It ended uh, last Monday. Um, very successful. Uh, 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 a, a beer runners documentary being uh, played at uh, at Red Hook. There was the Seacoast Winter Brew Fest, uh, which had uh, I think probably combined about five to six hundred people there across two sessions. Um, it was a great uh, pub crawl on Friday night, and there was sort of a 
pub crawl scavenger hunt, many beer and food pairings, including a, a bunch of brunches and a, a sushi pairing, um, which was which was pretty cool. So all in all, there was a lot of uh, special releases made for the week, um, and it was just a, a good time. Last Saturday, it was just uh, well, two Saturdays ago, it was the weather was a little bit warm. The city was popping, popping a lot of people across the city. Yeah, that, that was a fun beer fest for sure. And then I, I, I don't know, I forget what else I made. Oh, we did the podcast at Coat of Arms, which is online. Um, it was it was fun fun to do. But yeah, c- congrats on another uh, another week down, sir. I'll see Thank you. you. Oh, and, and, and how actually, did anyone get the badge, the, the second untapped badge? So actually, if if you give me about two minutes, uh, you go through the other guys, and I'll tell you how no, much. No, sure. Uh, like, Carla, uh, how, how were the past couple weeks? I know you just came back from uh, sunny Florida. Yeah, I had a couple of good local beers while I was down in the Tampa area. I happened to be down there during the beginning of Tampa Bay Beer Week. Just total coincidence visiting my dad. So I got some Cigar City, Darwin, um, a couple other really good, really good brews down there. Um, but it wasn't the focus of my trip. So it was just if it happened to be somewhere where there was good beer, I tried some. But I uh, did go to a place called Mr. Beery's Cool Craft Beer Bar. So shout out to those guys. Really know what they're talking about. Had a lot of great stuff on tap, both local and from away. Awesome. And uh, Ben, did you get up to anything uh, good the past couple weeks? Oh, you know, it's sticking it's close to home, sticking to the uh, Portsmouth Beer Week. Had some great times doing that. Um, there are a lot of great events going on, and, and uh, hats off to Sean for uh, doing a great job with that. Um, but I-, I was curious, coming out of that, are we done with Kate now for good? Did I read that? Is that correct? That's what I heard, and, and I was... Can we put was... this to bed? Yeah, well, I think we could. I, I, uh, I, I, yeah, I remember you texting me twice saying, uh, like, what was it Wednesday they put Kate on, the day I left for vacation, and then Saturday they put, like, oh, they have 2012 Kate the Great. I'm like, bastard. I had some of that on Saturday. Yeah. But I think, I, uh, from, I, I may have misinterpreted it, but I think uh, P. Brew texted out that, uh, or, or tweeted out that that was the last of it. You're saying, like, literally the last drop. Like, literally the end yeah. of it. Yeah, I, that, that's what I heard, too. I don't know where the heck I was. Uh, maybe Saturday I was asking him, and then they said that, that's what they heard, too. I mean, because, what, in a, in a month or two, Todd's going to be releasing his uh, version. It is not, it, it's his Imperial Stout that's supposedly supposed to just, you know, hopefully end all the talk when he's going to make a, a Russian Imperial again. But, yeah. Uh, I'll tell you, there's a couple bottles at my house, so the, the last drop, to, you haven't heard the last of it. <laughs> So, so when so when I asked you to come up for WrestleMania, you need a ticket, and the, you can come over. You know, I got to pay for the pay per view somehow. So whenever you get a chance, just <laughs> one sip will do. But uh, enough about that. Uh, but Ben, I um, what was I gonna say to you? Um, we we had good times at Levin last week. Um, a, a, another good show. Um, yeah, good, just good stuff. I mean, man, we we gave away a ton of ton of free stuff thanks to Goose Island. They were uh, they were good to us. Appreciate that. But nevertheless, we're here to talk about. Uh, Bissell Brothers, and we have a, a the chat's getting full. So if you guys are watching live, head on over to sblpodcast.com. Let's get into it. En- enough about us because we have we have people that are just eons popular than us. Um, Noah and Peter, please, if, if you want to give us a uh, you know kind of the the origin story of of the brewery, how, how did you guys come to uh, you know uh, production brewery, brewing? Sorry. Uh, the the story in a nutshell, so to speak. Sure. Yeah. We've, we've told the story many times. Do you want to you want to take it? Or you want to... Yeah, sure. Um, I was home brewing a lot in college. It was basically how it starts for seem, seemingly everyone who starts a brewery. Home home brewing in college is a kind of alternative to uh, um, yeah your other options in college. Um, <laughs> and uh, was looking like a psych degree, which that's pretty uncertain. And Peter was taking. Uh, really building this photography business at that time, so he kind of coaxed me in the direction of let's let's do something with our two two sort of skill sets together. It was um <clears throat> it was it was many elements of being in the right place at the right time on a variety of sort of different um, different levels. Uh, as Noah said, he was up in Farmington and uh, he was brewing a lot, and uh, it's it funny because we we be home. I was in Portland, so we'd be home at the holidays together. At the house, and we drink the beers that he was making with my father, and uh, you know, it went from you know the first few were very homebrewy to uh, this tastes like licking an ashtray. It was yeah, <laughs> God, that really scarred me. And our dad, our dad, we were in the kitchen. I was like, no, this this tastes like uh, 
just like, a, you know, putting a bunch of cigarette butts out in water and then drinking the water. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> ah, the good old days. <laughs> the old man, this was, like, in 2009. The old man turned to me, and he's like, you're being hard on it. I was like, well, he wants to get better at it. He needs to hear the truth. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, uh, but then, uh, you know, a year, a year and a half or so after that, uh, the beers were getting really exceptional, and uh, and Noah had brought me into sort of the craft beer world anyway, through through you know tasting and identifying different brands that I should look for. So um, I, I mean, it is sort of a, as as he said, a tale as old as time. Uh, a lot of bonding over uh, uh, drinking drinking beer and uh, learning from him. I was down in Portland doing my thing, um, growing my business. So I was very dialed into um, sort of the the business economy that we're in now, which is fueled by the internet. Not just in the sense that you have to have a tech company, but it's fueled by the internet in the way that people learn about things so fast now, and knowledge is free and everywhere. So I, I in my free time, I know in my free time I was growing my business, but also studying sort of this phenomenon and and how so many of the things that we're led to believe about starting a business don't really apply anymore. So I was learning about that. Well, Noah was sort of on his path, and there were separate paths. But they came together when we had the idea for the brewery in uh, late, uh, late 2011 was when we first said, okay, what about this? Because I had absorbed from Noah that, man, this is so exciting. Uh, you know, this world of craft beer was, it was, in those early days to me, it was very mystifying and genuinely, like, it was mysterious and exciting. I was, I had sensed that I was kind of like at the start of this rabbit hole of something that I, I wasn't really sure where it would go. And uh, Noah had, you know, so I had absorbed that from Noah, and Noah had absorbed from me uh, the entrepreneurial spirit where, okay, I don't want to do this to work for someone else. I want to, like, make this my own. So uh, that was where we kind of said, okay, we're going to do this. Uh, it was a Thanksgiving break. Again, we were both at home scheming at our, at our parents' house. Uh, Thanksgiving. <laughs> Years. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, <laughs> in those months that followed, so much data overage is so much texting. Yeah. Just any idea. I had to go to the bathroom so often. Yeah. Last, <laughs> last semester. Um, and we opened. Uh, we almost. We opened almost exactly two years after the initial spark had been had been set. Um, and uh, again, we, we it's um bringing bringing the two worlds together and uh, making it into something unique. That's, that's so, and so that, I think that that's yeah super unique too because it's it's kind of the, I mean obviously you're the same family but it's like the the two different sides business and brewing coming together like in, in a in a right way not someone who has a, a crazy idea and the other one's like following along you both kind of took the path together and it, and now you're here which is it that's it's yeah. kind of kind of a cool way to start um, yeah uh, speaking of now you're here can you tell us a little bit about you know what you're brewing the format you're brewing them in and kind of what you're known for um, for you know obviously a lot of us around Portland are familiar with you guys um, you know familiar with the long lines uh, to get your product as well uh, huge demand for it but I kind of want to get a little rundown from you about what you guys are all about as far as your beer goes um, that was another thing that we that we went over again and again and we, we very firmly believe that, uh, again, in, in, in a crowded world where you're getting a lot of information thrown at you in various forms all day, every day, uh, the age of the brewery having, you know, doing 20 things on a sort of mediocre level, I feel like that's over. you got to pick a few things and excel at those things. And we both agreed to that, and we both like fresh hoppy beers. It's always sort of our, our number one go-to. and Yeah, that, that was a, a big thing. It was We kind of looked at this and you could take it a million different ways and what you want to focus on, but at the end of the day, what we reach for, if if we have a choice, is something just easy, hoppy, bright, aromatic, and, and crushable, at the, at the end of the day, drinkable. Um, so that was like, well, we kind of, if we don't make those kind of beers, that's going to show that we don't want to drink these beers. Your heart's so that was at the it. end of the day. Is, um, you know, business plans seem kind of one-dimensional in that facet of it make, all right, we're just going to make coffee beer. Um, right. But I think there's so much um, within that umbrella that you can do. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of, uh, so kind of under that tenant, sorry to sidetrack there, um, uh, Substance was the first beer we released um, when we opened uh, in December of, so yeah, about a year and a quarter ago. Nice. Um, it's kind of right between 
pale ale and IPA. We, we generally refer to it as an IPA, but just a, a hop forward ale, not not super bitter at all. Um, very aromatic, and again, drinkable is sort of the end of the day. But I, I feel like a beer needs to be. Um, so we only that was the only thing we brewed for about six nine months, months, nine, nine months, months. Um, until just tank capacity. We just uh, we run on a ten barrel system, so we're making about three hundred gallons at a time in uh, tanks that are, are double that size. So um, so for the first nine months, all we had was two. 20-barrel uh, tanks um, of just substance, so it was um, got pretty pretty uh, um, intimate with that beer. Yeah. <laughs> we, saw, we saw right off, right after launch, we saw, based on how the first month went, that we couldn't brew another beer other than this, and um, it was out of necessity. I, w I will admit it was not in our necessarily in our game plan, but it was yeah. it was out of necessity. But it worked out well because. Again, it allowed this beer now to really like sort of enter the lexicon of Portland, um, and allow it to, to take time. Because I, I feel like nowadays with with so many one-offs, you it's hard to keep track of what people are brewing. And yeah. I mean, I love surprise, I love uh, novelty, but it, nine months of just substance in high demand allowed it to sink into sort of the mental database of what was good and available in Portland. But again, can't take credit for it because it was just out of necessity. Yeah, I, I can't say I've heard anything like that from brewers too. In regards to the, the one-offs, I, I think that's a that's a cool perspective. Is you know, obviously, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But you you wanted that one beer to make a mark on the on the culture. And I, think and I gotta say, it makes it easier for people like me when I can say, go get the substance. It's awesome, you know, as opposed to in general, what these guys brew is very good, and I don't know what they have now, but you'll probably like it. Um, so, uh, it it helps to have a beer yeah. to point to and go, this is awesome. Go get it. Were you, well, were you worried about? Go ahead. Were you worried about running out of ingredients for it, though? Um, yeah, that was uh, definitely pretty stressful. The first year we had to buy a lot of a lot of our hops. That first year came on spot, which is generally a way more of a pain in the ass to procure, and then also they're generally more expensive. We kind of. I definitely didn't know how, how all that worked uh, before we opened, but we did kind of realize, all right, we're not getting we're not getting the, the, the top shelf. We're not getting a, a bunch of Citra, and Amarillo, and Simcoe to put in this beer. We're going to have to be a little creative with what we use, so we kind of intentionally built the recipe with, with tops that aren't quite as hard to get as, as some other beers out there. Um, with time, we're finally being able to play around with those hops now, which is really cool, but I'm also really proud of the fact that yeah, that our flagship isn't a beer that relies on on all of those, you know, at the same same time. That's great. Um, yeah, and it's also nice to have a little more foresight now with um, hop the way hop contracting works is you really have to kind of tell the future with okay, I'm going to need X amount of this three years from now. 2018. Yeah, yeah. it's hard. <laughs> um, uh, it also makes you kind of it's good, you know, where you're. Um, it's good to have a plan, you know, whether or not that plan follows through or not, it, it forces you to kind of have more of a um, set out path for, okay, we're going to brew beer X this amount of times, and, um, and it, you know, it kind of prevents what we were talking about is just one-off after one-off. You kind of have yeah. to settle in to, if you're using these kinds, if you're making hop four beers in today's market, you kind of have to have planning on that front if you want to make them consistently. And the other thing too with, um, um, just to kind of rewind just uh, for a quick second about, you know, you asked when we launched with the substance, it it took off but, you, you know, you, you we, we did kind of plan for that and the idea is again in a super busy world where beer drinkers all over the country are communicating with one another. So the market, you, the, the consumer's mind is not only just as busy with what the breweries they have in their home area, but they're seeing all this other activity all over. So, if you're going to launch a brewery nowadays, you you gotta like swing for the fences, and you gotta like you have to make a splash with that first beer because you get you know you've ever heard the phrase like you know you have one chance to make a first impression. That first impression is going to be what people think of you, no matter if you rebrand or like change you know whatever it may be. It's very true. That first impression is what people are going to remember. So you you I'm happy that we. Um, at least I think our, our first impression was looked at 
fairly favorably. Um, that's I, from a business perspective. There's no other way to really enter a mar any market. It's not just beer. It's anything now. You gotta make a splash. In a, I know Ben has a question, but I want to just go off that real quick. I mean, in a world where, I mean, we've talked about this a lot in the show where, you know, everyone's favorite beer is different when, you know, the tastes abound uh, in when launching with just the substance, were you kind of nervous? I mean, even though you're making a big splash in that community, were you afraid that you weren't going to hit all the other, all the other pallets of, of craft beer lovers? I mean, was that even a concern? It was oh yeah I yeah. mean like when you're when you're when you're jumping into the unknown you have nothing to gauge it against so all we could do we liked the beer we thought the beer we was really beer really was good, good is your, your first step and that yeah yeah and beyond that it was like okay well when you start the process you're basically launching a factory from when you start a brewery it's a process that I mean I feel like we we were fairly time conscious with it it still took two years. So during that time, you know, it's very stressful. You just kind of have to get through it. Yep. And it was launching into the unknown, and it was a lot of worry. So you just kind of had to block that out. We thought we had a great product. Um, we had, you know, a small community of, of friends in the restaurant industry that would drink samples and say, oh, yeah, this is good. But, you know, when you're in it, you're in it. You know, you start signing leases and contracts. you got to just see it through and then see what happens. So there is... At the end of the day, like yes, we, we, we did plan, and by that at that time it was just hoping, you yeah. know, and planning as we could. But we the substance was designed to do what it did, but we didn't know. Yeah, oh Christ, yeah, there was tons of worry, <laughs> tons of <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. All right, Ben, yeah. what do you got? Well, no, I was just curious. You guys, I think I heard you guys say earlier that you're from Portsmouth, uh, uh, Portland originally. Is that right? Um, no, no. We grew up. Um, we grew up in uh, northern Maine, a little town called Milo. About oh, half an hour north. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I wasn't sure. Like, how how much time you guys had at the at, from the inception of like, hey, we're gonna get this idea going, to uh, actual production where you were sort of like laying the groundwork around. Did you guys have? Was there a period of time before the beer came out where you were sort of like setting up accounts and and you know, getting sort of getting restaurants and and uh, distribution on board. There was um, this this was uh, looking back, this was a fun time. Uh, yes, there was definitely uh, that we weren't setting up accounts literally, but uh, and we are also self distribute, so we don't need to really worry too much about that. Yeah, but um, th there was a grassroots period, and I've seen this misconstrued in several sort of media outlets that we were selling shirts. Uh, I definitely want to set the record straight. We didn't sell anything. I personally paid for any shirt that was that was born before we opened. Um, and that, you know, I just gave it to, to friends and supporters of, of the brewery. But no and I were both working at the Thirsty Pig. Yeah, that was kind of mm. in Portland, you know, kind of the origin of, of everything, every, every kind of our, our network here. Yeah. People, people living here for a while, but that was... So here's how it went. Place, right? So I was a photographer at the time. My studio was on Exchange Street in Portland. It was on the second story above Fuji Restaurant next to the Thirsty Pig. So, you know, 2010, 2011, I'm kind of cranking with this. We got people in there all the time. I met the, I met Allison, the owner, through just being there because I would end the session. I would bring the clients down there or I would meet friends there. So it, it gradually became the hangout, the go-to hangout of my group of friends. Um, so I meet the owner, Allison. I say, I'm a photographer. i got a studio next door. If you want me to shoot menu stuff or for, for you, let me know. So we ended up doing menu work. I did share with her. We, we would brand our bottles of homebrew. So no we're homebrew, and I would design labels. Excuse me. We'd give them to family and friends. Um, the logo wasn't always what it is now, but it was some semblance of that for a long time. So I gave Allison a bottle of the substance, uh, and this was like in February 2011. Um, and uh, you know, okay, you know, this is great. This is great. So Noah graduates. So we get the idea for the brewery at the end of uh, 2011. Noah graduates from Farmington in May 2012 and moves down, and he needs a job. I entered. I you know, Thirsty Pigs a beer bar. They need. They needed someone like him. I introduced him to Allie. He started working there and just really elevated the business. And I'm still in there all the time because I'm next door. And then, as we saw, kind of how much it was going to cost, I, uh, <laughs> I I just I I joined. I, I started working there too. So I was doing photography in the studio next door, and on on location and at the pig, 
And then we built this sort of grassroots sort of campaign just by sharing what we were going to plan to do with friends and bar regulars and whatnot. So it, there's definitely like a sense of the Thirsty Pig being the epicenter of what happened with Bissell Brothers because we were there and it got really tight. It was like we were working all the time and dumping every penny into, into the venture and we still needed to find the time to develop the business plan, to do all the work it takes to, to start the brewery. So um, long, long hours, but the, that time at the pig was great. And again, you know, I would, we would wear our shirts, we would print shirts and, and give them to friends and kind of, it was like a secret club because, you know, it doesn't say anything, it's just a logo. Right. So people would ask, oh, what is that, what is that? Oh, two of the, two of the guys behind the bar are starting this brewery. You know, they bring in samples from time to time, it's awesome, you should try it. So uh, there was definitely, um, I think, uh, who's uh, down on the left-hand side by Carla, sorry. Oh, it's Ben, ben. yeah. And so... Uh, to kind of answer Ben's question, there definitely was that incubation period where there was there was a buzz through sort of our social networks about this happening, even though it wasn't real yet. And I understand how some people could, you know, can can see that and take it in the other way that oh, the marketing machine and this and that. But yeah, it is what it is. We were just sharing ideas with family and friends. Didn't sell it a thing, and um, we were just making it aware of of making people aware of what we were doing. And kind of, as we've said in interviews time and time again, you develop an idea. And then you have to live it, because again, the two years that it took were hard and scary. So sometimes that, that's all we had was like that idea, like okay, we can see this through. So you, you just have to like be brave and just live it. Like wear the shirt of the brewery that doesn't exist yet. Just <laughs> totally. Oh my God, totally. And I mean, and I there there's breweries not necessarily. I mean, sure around here, but uh, you know, in, in Mass and wherever that that might hit you hard with the marketing first, but they don't have the beer to back it up. Where as you you had the beer ready, you were passing it out, and people were responding to it. But you also had that element of like, "Ooh, what's this?" You weren't shoving it in their face and saying, "We're coming, just wait for us." You were gonna be, but it was it was a a gorilla, but not like it was it was well done. Which I don't we think we've seen that in the community. Anyone. We waited for people to ask us about. Yeah, it. which is which is crazy. Really, yeah. Uh, so, not, uh, so yeah, yeah, people stealing the idea. No. Now, when you guys were uh, were working at the bar and you guys were coming up with your plan, what Kind of, how'd you guys go in the direction of uh, cans and uh, 16 ounce cans? That was always kind of, it was kind um, of just an organic thing. It was, yeah. Uh, I feel like there's a reason a pint has stood the test of time, and whenever I have 12 bottles, a 12 ounce bottle or a 12 ounce can, unless it's like a huge stout or, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's that, not enough. For me. Um, <laughs> So that and um, just Peter's eye for design, it was a much better canvas. Um, and I mean, looking back, kind of the um, there's a little bit of actually a lot of ignorance on thinking I knew all about the science of, of why a can was better. You kind of hear that traditional things are better for the environment, less weight, and there's a lot of those bullet points, and like they're kind of true, but. Um, Ultimately, it was it was better for the beer. Is is really what it was kind of you yeah. know an organic decision kind of that we went in that direction. But it it was the right choice knowing what we know now. I think too um, one of the one of the things that holds more relevance is that not it, not what we're going to package in, but and I think this is important from a business standpoint that we knew from the beginning that everything was to be packaged. Um, I think it's going to get tougher and tougher to launch draft only or draft and growler only. Package product puts you on the map. It puts you in the eye of the consumer and in the mind of the consumer much easier. So it was – we decided on a can very quickly for the reasons that Noah said. It was just – for a hoppy beer, um, you know, I, I'd like to think we're, we're fairly forward-thinking. So um, I think cans still hold kind of a futuristic allure to them. Oh, yeah. uh, for the design, it was going to work better for what we had in mind. Um, but but I think the most important thing is that we we knew we were going to package. We knew they were going to package in 16 ounce cans, but it was we were going to package from the beginning. I think that's very important. That's good. Yeah. You mentioned um, some of your design, but I, I'm hoping that maybe for people who are listening, maybe you can describe kind of what your design aesthetics like, what it's like on the inside of your brewery and or you know your cans, because that's it's very unique branding. Um, and and uh, we've talked before about where you've gotten some of the inspiration for that. But if you can kind of give people like a little bit of a picture, you know, of, of what you've got going on in terms of design, that would be cool. Yeah, cool. this is. Um... I mean, this is Peter's thing. I'll I'll speak to it a little bit because it's 
Well, because really cool it, for me yeah, to watch. Yeah, because it's, from him. it's not at all what I do or really have an eye for. But um, so it's this is our um, one of our cans. That's kind of our our main logo there. Um, and it's just uh, you know a, a BBB Bissell Brothers Brewing. Um, it was from my input, you know, on on kind of Peter would ask me for what I thought about things. You know, I certainly didn't design anything, but I kind of I we wanted something relatively clean at the beginning was a word that kept coming back, and I think our cans really put that. Um, you kind of mentioned the brewery. The brewery is a little more wild uh, <laughs> in, in terms of there's um, none of that's really from us there generally. Uh, it's um, a guy named uh, Brett LaBelle that Peter's friends with. Did It's just really, really awesome graffiti. And, and again, for me, not as um, an art expert in any way. It's just so many breweries are... It has to be a clean environment, and that's that's cool, and that that needs to happen. But you you spend a lot of goddamn hours there, so to have <laughs> yeah, really helps. You know, I, I feel like if, if it didn't have it, just gives you it just it changes the energy of the place. It sounds easy to say, but it's it's like how you how you decorate your home. It changes <clears throat> changes the atmosphere in that setting. And if you're going to be spending your whole life there, you might as well make it a nice. Place to be. Yeah. <laughs> so, actually, speaking of, <clears throat> excuse me, speaking of the of the brewery, uh, the industrial way sort of has this history of being a, a, a hub of uh, new and sort of incoming breweries in Portland. There, can you guys tell us a little bit about, about how you landed there? Had you looked at other spots beforehand, or did you kind of know that that was a spot that you wanted to be at? Um, that's a good question. No, it was the first place we looked at because uh, Dan and David Cleveland reached out to us from Main Beer Company. It, again, knew us you know, through the thirsty pig. Knew us through the pig. Knew what we were trying to do. We seemed like solid guys in their eyes, so they, uh, David reached out to me and said, um, I mean, it was in their best interest, too, because um, they didn't want to have to pay to have the equipment they weren't going to use moved out, but they reached Ultimately, out to us. hugely generous. Yeah, they, oh, oh they absolutely, did. yeah. They saved us. Um, so they put us in touch us. with the broker and, uh, and the landlord, and there was a no-brainer because not only is it good industrial space, but... The floors were already uh, um, planed to, down to a drain. Glycol drops were already installed and were literally ready to go. You know, a beautiful killer in great condition. Uh, new boiler. Uh, all the all this, this skeleton of what we needed was there. Um, so it was really a no-brainer. One and done. Yeah. Was was the transition between home brewing and production? Uh, I mean, that being made easier aside, you know, having having the uh, the space that was already tailored to a brewery. How was the learning curve from going from home brewing to now? <laughs> steep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. But yeah. For starters, it's pretty steep. Um, but we, I wasn't really. It, it's it's one of those things. It's it's steep, but it's all the concepts are all the same. You're doing the exact same. Ultimately, you're doing the exact same thing with a way better <laughs> equipment. It's like going from your home kitchen to, you know, a, a five-star restaurant. Um, you, you have things that are actually made to do what you're trying to do rather than finagle them to do what you're trying to do. But with that said, without um, TIG Pro, we got all our, um, all our equipment from a stainless manufacturer that's about a half mile down the road from where... The brewery is, and their um, the consultation they offered on how you actually use the shit was. <laughs> there would have been a lot of beer dumped if they didn't show us how to how to how to operate the stuff, and um, yeah, we we would have been done with that. It was priceless, that. right? <laughs> Say that again. It was priceless. Yeah, truly, truly, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was still you know we're still learning. We're, st we're still learning. Mm -hmm. Brewing's one of those things where I I think. Um, as soon as you say you know it all or you get comfortable, you're, Ooh, yeah. you're kidding yourself because there's there's just an infinite amount of things to learn and infinite amount of things you can you can try with it. So we're we're still not even scratching the surface on how to use that that our system as well as we can and make beers. As there's well ways as to can. innovate every day yeah. on every level on, on the most minute way. The most minute repetitive thing that you're doing is a way to make it more efficient and better and cleaner and and, and um, you know, less input up to the, the biggest processes. So um, th th there's there's always room for innovation, and uh, 
yeah, like Noah said, we're still learning how to maximize our equipment. I see Noah, now that he's gotten up, I can I can speak about him. Um, I see with the brewing processes every day, and the beer just keeps getting better. It's really cool to see. Uh, you know, we're talking just utilization of space in the tanks, efficiencies with, uh, you know, work day, how to speed things up. Um, how to how to do the dry hop more efficiently. Um, it, it's really awesome to see because uh, you can always push it further. Um, real quick, I just wanted to rewind to Carla's question about design. I just had a few things to add with that, um, uh, very briefly. But again, you know, if, I, if we're going to speak to a, a group of people online, I definitely want to make a few points clear with the can with everything else. I'm not, and this is important for anyone wanting to start a venture of any kind. Um, I am not a designer. I'm a, I, I'm a, you could call me a photographer. I've spent a lot of time in programs like Adobe Lightroom. I'm not a designer, so to speak, but you can learn how to do that, and I did. And it's just about, it's one of those things where you, you, there's a, uh, you, you think you're not something because you didn't train in it, you didn't go to school for it, but really, who isn't who? We, it's like Instagram. Instagram's made everyone a photographer. So once I kind of let that go and said, okay, well, who, who, the, who the fuck says I'm not a designer? I can design this stuff. And it was just about making something in my mind that looked cool. And again, Noah wasn't doing it, but it was like, all right, what do you think about this? Does this look good? You know, he, I don't do anything without his okay because we we have that same vision. You know, we have different methods, but we have that same vision. Um, so I would just like add that to whoever's listening, like. You can do. It sounds so cliche. You can, you can do things like that. That that maybe you society has led you to believe that you can't do. It's there's there's no, there's no barrier. It's all imaginary. So I do all the design work now, and I, I am technically a designer, which is so silly to say. Like, and I do. I, I do. It takes so much longer because I am not a trained designer, but I can still do it. I don't need to pay someone else to do it. And you get it. Get, it just gets so much easier as you go. And. Um, the same thing with the brewing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And none of none of us, none yeah. of the seven people that work work, uh, work at the Vessel lick. Brothers a are lick. in any way, shape, or form have a right to be doing what they're doing on, on paper, which I we're all really proud of because it's it's because we've all just really worked hard to learn what's been put in front of us, and that's it's all it comes down to. Nothing's handed to you, even if you, if you do get formal training. It's whatever you're gonna do if you do it as good as you can. It's not gonna be easy to do that. And you're going to get put to the test, regardless if you've had formal training or years of work. You all that stuff will, is tested constantly. A brewery, a brew house environment is like one of the most volatile places. Everything's always wet, always fucking breaking. It's wet, <laughs> and so so all your knowledge up until that point will be tested. We lost a pump last week. It had happened. The last time it happened was in, I think in May, mid brew with a mash in. There was a mass shitting there, and you know it was a very, very stressful day. We got through it. This last week, Noah was actually out of town. Yeah, um, I got the call from our brewer in the morning that the, the pump had failed or was was failing, and it was like it was still kind of a pain in the ass because I was going to spend time with my family that day. But I just went out and made a few calls, and we just got it was so much easier because I had been there before. So, you know, that's how this just keeps going. You know, Rob Todd over at Allagash, in at 20 years, he's still dealing with problems. But a lot of those he can solve because he's been there before. He's been at it for a long time. So yeah, I'm sure he doesn't panic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got this. I, got I imagine he's a pretty cool-ass cucumber. So it's yeah. just <laughs> aggression towards excellence and mastery, and you just learn things get less and less hard. But then as you grow and develop, there's new challenges. So once you, get, once you make your peace with that, like when we started, I feel like I was just like every day there was a c catastrophe, like, oh, my God. <laughs> Uh, but once you once you make your peace, said okay, this day is not going to go like the last day. I got to get through it. You you come in kind of ready, and it gets easier and easier, and, and you you begin to master your environment. But there's always things you can learn. Now you guys seem uh, really close uh, as brothers. Uh, my brother and I do a lot of stuff with uh, with two beer guys, and sometimes we have differences of opinions, and we go in different directions and and ideas. And and really, when it comes to uh, ahead of like, okay, we're gonna do this and do that, uh, who wins? Um, who? Well, there's no uh, we both win or we both lose ultimately. <laughs> Yeah, um, I would say there's 
necessarily uh, winning or losing. Uh, we definitely butt heads, um, but it ultimately, I've been thinking about this a lot lately, it's trust and respect is what it all boils down to. At the end of the day, you have to be open to what Peter says, even if what initially it sounds outlandish. We're very, very different in, in, in so many ways. Peter's much more extroverted than I am. I'm much more introverted. He's, he's much more in the future. I'm much more in the, in the present. And those things all work great together, but at first when we introduce ideas to each other, sometimes you can be like, what are you thinking about? <laughs> yeah, it's like very guarded and closed off, but you just have to you have to trust, like, this person, I know this person so well, he's not stupid. Yeah. What he's saying to me, I need to value and think through and be open to, rather than, and it's just trust. You have, you have to trust what that person says. So I think that's key. I think a lot of it, too, is uh, learning, because I had a business experience, but it was as a solopreneur, as they, as they say, or a, a sole proprietor. A lot of it is learning to be a partner, too, and accepting, like yeah. I said, that we yeah. have. You know, this person operates differently than me on a variety of things. That's okay. If anything, it's probably good. Mm -hmm. You know, it's good that we don't think the exact same way. Because um, that, oh, you know, why do you need another person then? <laughs> we're, we're able to survey every possible possibility about a, a thing because we're, 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 we're bringing different ideas to the table. Like just earlier we were talking about uh, tasting room hours for the summer. And I had one idea, Noah had the other. And it was like, oh, okay, now we get to survey all these different ideas. Um... So I think part of it, too, is like accepting a partnership in that, okay, this person thinks differently than I am, but they're bringing stuff to the table that I couldn't. So, uh, and like Noah said, trust and respect. So um, if you hear something that kind of freaks you out a little bit, don't panic. And I, I have the tendency to get excited. Noah has a tendency, uh, as he puts it, to uh, he pumps the brakes, I say go. And um, I don't necessarily really mean that I say go about everything, but I get really excited about stuff, and then I start thinking about like crazy possibilities. And I put no, it's kind of like, well, like, well, what about, <laughs> what about uh, <laughs> that can work. Um, <laughs> so, so it's good. So I kind of then, then as days pass, be like, Jesus Christ, like, you know, this is really good right now. Let's like not worry about that. Yeah. And uh, and then it, it, in turn, Noah percolates with the stuff I'm talking about and starts thinking, oh, what, what if? Like, yeah. what if? So uh, it all works out. It does. It figures itself out. When we're yeah, it's a good dynamic. Your brother. Nice. I'm just trying to catch up so I grab my last beer. Well, quick shout out. Henniker Brewing, Working Man's Porter, coming at you. It's been in the basement for a bit, and damn, good beer. Uh, I saw you had a troublesome uh, off color going on over there, Noah. Yeah. I have a Molotov Light Evil Twin. Nice. Great nice. Point. Got an interlude right there. We'll probably crack yeah. after this. We got an allegation yeah, interlude on yeah. deck. Now, when I was gone, do we do we talk about your the, the your rise to, to popularity of, of all these beers yet? Because I have a question that could fit in there if anyone's asked. No, cool. So I, I remember I was there a couple weeks ago when uh, one of the days when Swish was released. Um, have you talked about Swish yet uh, on the show when I was out, or would you mind talking to us about it and kind of how how crazy how crazy of in like you're brewing to sell in the same day? How how crazy of a thing that is? Yeah, it's um. It's always, that's kind of how it always generally is with, with beer, you know, now it's, um, there's only so many hours in the day, and, you know, we're such a small team, and for the while, canning's taken 10 hours to can a batch, so you're, you're selling and, and packaging at the same time, a lot of the time, um, and Quish was no different, really, you know, it was just, um, kind of going back to the beginning of this about hop contracts, that was an example of, okay, cool, now we can get to play around with some things. Um, I think Peter described it on the website as the, the double IPA we dreamed about, because it was kind of, we would joke like last year about like, yeah, we'll never be able to make something like that. Like, But yeah. now it's, you know, now you get in the industry and see how it works a little bit and you can make the right move to procure those ingredients. Um, so it's cool. It's just a really, really kind of... Uh, indulgent beer for us. Just, oh, yeah. Yeah, just, you just the, being able to use those quantities of hops and those varieties is like, yeah, really not something All cylinders. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I think, I think we're super, oh, I, I, no, it'll go after Carla's thing. Carla, hit it. Oh, uh, yeah, so I've got a, I've got a Twitter question um, from Davey Perry, um, kind of related to what we were just talking about, um, which the question is, 
Will you boys be getting your cans to stores around Maine outside of Portland in the future? Um, so I'm basically kind of asking about, you know, the, the somewhat limited distribution right now. How, how far out are you guys planning to go? And uh, uh, then specifically, somebody wants to know about Dover Fox, Foxcroft also. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Um, that's, that's the town neighboring our hometown, Milo. Yeah. Dover, Ground Zero, basically. That's where Sean's wife's from. Get it out, Sean. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I want to know if you're going to be on draft at the Bears' Dad. Yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe someday. We are on draft at Hobnobber's Pub in Milo. Yeah, two okay. lines. Two lines. Yeah, it's about, um, um, it's about 300, 500 feet from our where we grew up, where our parents still live. So our, our dad or mom when they come down. Our father uh, is like on cloud nine. His whole <laughs> life now, like he walks down to the corner pub, and I mean, you know, it's 300 feet away. Two Bissell lines there. He, our father, is on cloud nine, man. I bet he is just. He comes down and helps out all the time. Uh, so yeah, uh, can distribution question. Um, I'll, uh, I'll take this, and uh, Noah can follow up. The, we've wrestled with this for a long time. We get hit for all angles, uh, to, to send more beer, more places, more often. Uh, I'll be blunt again. This is you know, this is a hard line business. At the end of the day, we run a tap room. A tasting room that we've we've paid extreme attention and detail to to cultivate a unique experience being on premise. Like Carl earlier was talking, and Noah was talking with Carl about the, uh, um, the 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 design aesthetic inside the brewery and inside the tap room. That has all been deliberate, and it's been to 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 design to to come there. You know, you come there to get the beer. We do have beer to send out beyond that. It's a freshness issue. This is we're a Portland brewery. So until Portland can take what it can take, you know, it might make it out. At this point, cans do go down to Tully's and Wells. Um, that's as far south as they go. Uh, and then uh, 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 the vault in Lewiston is as far north as they go. Do I want them in Bangor and up mid-coast? Of course. But, again, if we're sending cans up that far right now, and then in turn we're, we're, we're running out of cans at 3 p.m., on a Saturday afternoon, because we sent those cans up there, we've got to take care of our home storefront first. So we do have another tank coming in in May, uh, just for cans. Uh, we, we, we are not trying to cut anyone out, but when it comes down to freshness and delivery logistics, we, you know, our, our guys, uh, Josh and Cam, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, most of that's Portland because it's two waves of beer. It's substance then whatever else we have that week. And then out of town on one of those days, all the way down to York, and then all the way up to Lewiston. Getting farther than that is really just logistically very difficult, beyond the freshness issues and running out of beer at the tap room. So right now it is, it's a we're a Portland brewery, and, and um, I'm, it sucks for them. Yeah, I, I get it. You know, you live in Bangor and you're a beer enthusiast and you want the beer. I get that, and I'm I'm sorry for that. But um, you know, it. Uh, I've said this in interviews before. It, it harkens back to, you know, before Prohibition, there was the same amount of breweries in the country that there are now. And we've now returned. People forget that. And we've returned to that time now, almost. So we're, we're a Portland brewery. Um, we're better, yeah, better yet, come down and see us. Yeah, now we're talking. Know. There it is right there. Yep. Thing. Oh, have, me and um, my girlfriend, who is our general manager, I'm sorry, I get to work with her too, which is awesome. But just to kind of get away from... Everything we went to Vermont um, last week. The like, girls yeah. are right over there talking. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, hello, girls. No. <laughs> we, have, we have a girl, Carla. So we, yeah, <laughs> we've seen them before. <laughs> no, I mean, your 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 tap room is great because it has those little uh, like the hip hop like figurines on the on the side. Like what? Oh, yes. homies, the homies. <laughs> homies. The coolest, the coolest yeah. damn thing I've ever yeah. seen. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. He has like a massive collection of those that he graced. Uh, yeah, just little shit like that that makes the place ours, you know? It's like right, yeah. totally. what it's all about is making it your own, being an extension what of I, yourself. What I tell people, and my brother and I, in addition to Hester and, and Vanessa and the rest of the staff, we've had such fun memories doing beer tourism, going to Vermont, going to New York, going to these other places, going to, going to Boston. Um, uh, Noah, some friends, and I went down to Boston for a concert last April. Oh, excuse me, went to Trillium, Night Shift, um, Night Shift 
it was so fun. I, I still talk about it all the time. And we've done a bunch of trips since then. It's such a great way to get people together in the name of this beer. And it sounds, again, it sounds cliche, but it's it's cliche for a reason. So I, I would I would tell people, whether you're in Bangor or whether you're out of state and you want to buy our beer, you just kind of got to come here. But it's not just about Bistol Brothers. If you want to come down, stay the night in a hotel, get a nice dinner in the old port, soak it in. Like we're a, we're a, a food and drink destination powerhouse. You will, you will have a great time, and then you'll get the beer that you're looking for. You'll have a great time out. Get a bunch at, of other beers. At the, uh, oh. Yeah. You'll come out to the space that we spend so much time creating this crazy, cool world that's entirely our own. You'll get yep. to taste that and drink that in, pardon the pun, and then you'll, you'll get all this other cool stuff on top of it. I mean, you come down in the summer, you can go to the beach, uh, you know, world-class dining and drinking, nightlife. So that's why I tell people, you still got to come here where, where the beer is built to be consumed fast, so we go through a lot of it. Uh, we are a main brewery, and we're very proud of, you know, the, the, uh, I think the, uh, the drinking culture that's emerged in, in like Bangor up north, but we just can't really be up there yet. So um, it's not a snobbiness thing. It's not a uh, exclusive thing that we're trying to cultivate. It's literally just we can't do it. So yeah. just, uh, just quickly, it's, it's just, you know, we're not, when we get a new tank, that's such a small, small incremental increase of beer. We're not... When we expand, we're we're not you know moving to some new facility with a 100 barrel brew house and you know 300 barrel tanks. Our our expansions are so incremental that you know they they don't and we like it that way because we we're just not rapid 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 growth. Sustainable growth. Trying to do yeah. So those things come slowly. Those tank by tank. Town by town. You know. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, I mean, and even I mean, cans cans would be great to, to you know to take home and all that. But I mean, for for Ben and I, I mean, even Sean as well. I mean, we're I'm I'll speak for myself. I'm perfectly content with going to the York River Landing in York to to, to have some fresh. You know, we I think we what do we have there? I think we had Swish on tap once. Yeah, Swish, yeah. Yeah, it was just it was just like it was, and, and Nick who yeah. runs the place. I mean, like coming going to a beer bar where a guy knows his beer and has it on draft. Yeah, I think it's better for me than cans, but I I still recommend going on going up to to visit and then t obviously taking maybe the main beer tour. The bus will take you to it if you don't know how to get there. If, but I mean I mean see, it's nice and easy to drive by yourself. But down down in southern New Hampshire, for those that, that watch or listen, it's uh, uh, Black Birch always gets it. I know I mean you know, your River Landing always gets it, so you can get it close to Mass, you know, sort of in draft. Yep. Yeah. And you still always pretty much has it down in that neck of the woods as well. Yeah. We do, we do special. We have, we do have special. I, I, I should have clarified. We can't get cans up to Bangor, but we do uh, get kegs up there. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 We, um, um, you know, either our father will take them up on the way home, or one of the owners of the bars will will come down. Um, and in the future, I definitely want to explore sort of a, like a beer weekends in other cities where, okay, we're not gonna open up you know, full distribution to this or that city out of state, but, okay, for this weekend, we're going to be at these five bars, and we'll be yep. down there, you know, I definitely want to explore that in the future, because, it, it you know, it's, it's um, yeah, yeah, come up and see us, but that's a tall order, you know, I want to try a lot of beer down in New York City or wherever, but I can't drive there at the drop of the dime right now, so, you know, right. if they, but if they did a weekend jaunt somewhere in Portland, oh, I'd be, I'd be out there for sure, so... I, that's something I want to explore in the in the future, sort of like a like a weekend tour. Oh yeah. Well, uh, I, I I I know we're coming up close on, on the hour. I don't know what, what your time frame is, but I do want to get a couple extra ones in there before we we close it out. Um, I, mean, I think we're just cruising, so yeah. Right, go cool. Ahead. Hey, it's oh cool. Well, uh, I mean, I know we we talked about we talked about swish, talked about substance. Um, but I want to know if, if there's anything uh, in the in the hopper, no pun intended, uh, that that you're working on for future beers that. We we can get excited about. Oh yeah, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> and the question goes to that was a nice Ric Flair move right there. Yeah. <laughs> um, was that Billy so, Gunn? Sorry. Wish like four more times. Um, this you know for this spring, then we'll uh, use that tank for Baby Genius, which is kind of our um, it's a mix of American and Australian hops, four um, percent. We love that beer around the brewery because it's so easy to take it haul from whatever and you don't need to, to worry about. So we got that one. Um, we have kind of even a more of an extension of that called uh, Diavoletto, which would be like a two 
two and a half, three percent beer. Um, nice. The beers that I'm pretty sure a lot of uh, lemon drop and citra hops in that. So that's you know even more of a crusher in the summer. Um, as the summer, we'll plan on doing a beer with some strawberries. Um, just a one-off um, in when strawberries are fresh. So probably sometime in July. And then we'll be using some a uh, few new varieties of Australian hops and some sort of hoppy beer in the late summer, early fall. It's kind of cool. what that looks like right now. Pretty sweet yeah. roadmap. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, this summer's going to be awesome. Shut up, Carla. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll be there. <laughs> so, uh, I have, so I have a question that we actually ask every guest um, that we have on this show. And um, you guys have already given, actually, a lot of really awesome advice for you know people in the business already um, in the show. But the question is, if somebody came up to you, like they showed up at your brewery and they said, hey guys, I love what you're doing, I want to start my own brewery. What is the one thing, what is the piece of advice that you would tell them? What would you actually tell them if someone you know came up to you? Ooh. Strain yourself a little Ooh. here. Yeah, we don't need to Easy now. Easy. No, no, give it to us. What do you got? <laughs> um, I think... Earlier is, is no, nothing's given to you. It's, some people might have it easier than the other, but see what you're trying to do, get a clear vision, and then accept you're going to have to work really, really hard. You're going to have endless setbacks, but keep keep that ultimate vision in mind. You got to keep moving towards that, and and surround yourself with people that are are smarter than you, <laughs> and get as much and just get as much as you can out of them. That's, people that have done that before. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would just follow that up with, uh, it is, um, it's not a passive thing, um, and I think that's that's uh, our culture now, sort of, okay, you can start a lot of businesses very quickly and very seamlessly, and really not have it affect your life. If you're going to start a brewery, it's going to affect your spouse, your kids, if you have them, it's going to affect everything about your life. Your life is going to ultimately change, because it, it's so involved, and it's so capital rich. Um, like Noah said, get get ready for a big fight, two years or more. Every day. Get ready to abandon your social life and watch sort of everyone that's kind of in their grooves just kind of keep living their life while you're dealing with this. Um, but but if you the funny thing that happens is when you begin to take risks and put yourself out there and sign leases and sign contracts and uh, borrow money, you rise to the challenge. And um, so so the more the more you can get your neck out early the more likelihood you have of succeeding because there's more to lose. So to start a brewery, I would say just in a sense, you, you got to have a lot to lose on the line, and um, that, that'll that that'll get you through it. Um, but it just get get ready to, like, set yourself in for the fight and uh, and then start enjoying the, the benefits on the other side because it, it is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty goddamn awesome, yeah. Beer, it's guys. really awesome. <laughs> there it is. Come on, guys. It is awesome. <laughs> I would do everything over again twice. Yeah. Nice. You know, all stuff. It's 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 that awesome. Who needs friends? It's really? that awesome. Yeah. So, no, no, no. no. <laughs> well, I I, uh, I won't let you. I I know you're all over the place I, I, as as far as distribution of of Portland breweries or Portland uh, bars. So I won't ask you what's your favorite place. But I'll I'll give a quick shout out to the bar that I recently went to a month ago. But I was on I was on their screen a couple weeks ago, and I don't know if you guys saw this, but Arcadia, uh, yeah. over over at Arcadia Bar, uh, they have Swish, uh, and you know they have they have Bissell Brother rotating, but they also have me on the TV, so playing video games above the NBA Jam yeah, table. Yeah, yeah. Don't kid yeah. yourself. So uh, I, that's my favorite place to grab a Bissell, besides the actual place. I, I don't know, uh, Carla, do you have a favorite yeah, place? The owner of Arcadia actually. Uh, Clean house in the Salvage Pac-Man tournament last night. Oh, I heard that. I heard nice. that. Was, uh, yeah, we we thought our uh, Jose, the uh, the rep that works with us from Wild Goose Canning, um, we um, was in town. So right around the same time he was last year. So Salvage Barbecue did a, a Pac-Man tournament again. And Jose dominated last. Year. <laughs> That's so yeah, awesome. Absolutely dominated, but this year he. Uh, yeah, his performance was a little lackluster, but yeah, yeah, uh, I don't know what happened. It was um, <laughs> right, yeah, Arcadia, yeah. Chris, Chris beat uh, Mike Fava from from Oxbow, who was 
who Jose beat last year. So Fava is the first loser two years in a row, which is yeah. pretty good. Cool. Uh, I mean, I'm, how do you go home after losing something like that? I know. It's, it's, it's just, two years yeah. in a row. I mean, that, <laughs> that, man's, that man's different in Philly. So. Yeah. <laughs> Magic Nintendo glove, too, from the Wizard. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. Oh. First time I've mentioned it, on the show. Thank God. I <laughs> worked on the computer today, and I saw that Noah had queued up on Wikipedia. Yeah, the wizard. The wizard, and I was like, oh, wait, yeah, the, the tournament. The longest Nintendo the commercial. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, is what it's called. Like, so, uh, yeah, that is fantastic. Carla, favorite place to grab Abyssal? Do you um, have one? I, I always head straight to the Thirsty Pig because I know it's going to be on. Like, it's it's like one of the guaranteed things for me. Yeah. Um, you know, so <laughs> so I, I go for the where can I find it? Oh, yes, I can find it at the Thirsty Pig. That sounds like a commercial right there. Where can I find it? Thirsty one thing Pig. I really enjoy... <laughs> One thing I really enjoy, because you know, there are some uh, some production caps that we hit, but we're not tiny. We are making a good amount of beer, so we're on at a huge variety of spots in Portland. So depend. What I really love is that, you know, people can get our beer from different social groups, different like sort of like people that favor different bar environments. You can find it in fine dining. You can find it in party bars. You can find it in craft beer bars. You can find it in like late night food spots. That's that's one thing that I really like. Nice. And, it, it's, it, yeah. Yeah. How about you guys? I was, yeah, Ben, uh, favorite spot. What do you got? Well, for, uh, let me say, first spot had to be Thirsty Pig for me. That was the, my first taste. But uh, locally, got hit up York River. That's yes. where it's at down here. Yeah. York River. Uh, can I get an amen, Sean? Where you? Uh, where's your favorite spot? Amen. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> uh, I'm actually going to have to say I think my next one's going to be in Milo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, just, I, just, I just have to figure out. Uh, I, don't, I haven't been there yet, but uh, that'll, that'll be my next one. Sean's first ever applause on the show. The food is on a Portland level. It's, yeah. The food there is so good. And uh, it is. it used to be a, a hospital. It used to be the hospital. A lot of the older folks in town were born there. So there's like above the bar, there's like an examination light, and um, <laughs> it's a really interesting spot. It's really really cool, and the food is phenomenal. So and what's yeah. the name of that place in Milo again? A uh, Hobnobbers Pub. Hobnobbers Pub, cool. Let's go right now, Ben. I'm, I'm just glad Sean didn't mention anything about popping his cherry. Oh God, yeah, <laughs> jeez, that, that's that's last episode stuff right there. <laughs> <laughs> and, and motorboating, but uh, but that's that's a different show. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, Sean, Ben, Carla, any any other questions? I mean, uh, oh, Carla, not a, not a question, but just a shout out. Um, this is self serving as well as serving you guys. Uh, my first uh, article for the Bollard came out this month, uh, and it actually does talk about canning and uh, and you can, yeah, you guys as well. So, uh, so if you guys uh, are around in Portland and, and see that, uh, you can also find it online at theballard.com. So just a little shout out there. I can't be the only one shilling, you know, you know, letting Brian shill his book all the time without a little bit of my, my writing too. <laughs> the one episode I put it away in the closet, so I'll let you take that. <laughs> awesome. I, I would like to uh, say that um, it was a, a Ben Moore, Active Beer Geek, has really been a proponent of Bissell Brothers from the beginning. Oh, yeah. And he shared a lot. He shared a lot of his interest of of your brand and your brewery, um, even from the get go, with myself. And so that's that's probably where I be, where I first became aware of it, even before even trying your beer. Um, he's been a, a cheerleader with pom poms out there. So I just want to give him a more, give him a shout out. So that's yeah, high praise. Ben's a big friend of the brewery. He's yeah. he's great. High praise, uh, Ben. Any questions or uh, any final uh, final thought? Deep thoughts from Ben Handy. Hmm. Yeah, uh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> this is the part of the show we just stare at Ben for a little bit and make sure he <laughs> gets gets one more thing out. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. Thank you guys coming on here tonight. It's been awesome talking to you. Thanks for having us. This yeah, thanks awesome. a lot. Yeah. I, yeah. I I got nothing left. Uh, do, do you, I mean odd question, but do you guys have anything you want to ask us? I know that's kind of a weird, like random. Is the the podcast been around? Oh, August 2012, so we're coming up on almost uh, two, we're two and a half years in. Wow. 
and you're episode 107, so uh, we, we hope to have you on b before episode 200. And uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, we've been we've been doing it. I, we've we've covered more Maine than New Hampshire for God's sakes, thanks to Carla. She's she's really. Uh, I mean, if if there's one person who promotes the show up up and up that way, it's it's her or uh, Chad on Twitter. So, it's, so you guys are are uh, at, at least you, Brian and, and Sean, are Portsmouth area. Yep, it bends over in Berwick. Okay, okay. So, how about top three Portsmouth bars? That is uh, an God. issue. Other than Wham, is the only place I've really been to. <laughs> as, as you as you take the one I was about, I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. In no, uh, to go in town. Yeah. Uh, for, for, so bar strictly bars, no brewery. I I would obviously say Coda Arms, without a doubt, numero uno. Um, I think you guys would love the press room. Also, I love I, I love the press room, especially when they I mean they have bands every night, but such a kick-ass place. I would say the press room also. I think yeah. you guys would uh, enjoy with the vibe kind of they got going on there. I don't even know. I don't even know what number three would be right now. I, I I like those two too much to recommend a third. Besides Wim, obviously. But uh, Ben, can you think of anything else on on the Portland front? Oh gosh, I, every every. I, I mean, I'd say eleven though. I toss. I mean, I toss. If you want to toss a good, you know, that's not even in Portsmouth, but I throw in a brewery share. I mean, like you know, I keep going to the southern southern Maine stuff. You know, yeah. we, we trip over to White Birch. We trip over to to uh, yeah, Black Birch. Black Birch. Pigs fly. <laughs> Black Birch, not White Birch. But yeah, yeah, no, we go over there too. Oh, you do go. Yeah, we are everywhere. Uh, Sean, thoughts on on your your favorite bars and not not just the ones you deliver beer to. <laughs> <laughs> I, we deli gotcha. we deliver beer to all of them, so. Oh, the gaslight too. The gaslight. Yeah, I see the gaslight. I'd say it. It would come. They, there's, there, there's so many to actually mention, and uh, and with with this, with ports with beer week. Is your boss was, watching right now? You can say three bars for these guys. <laughs> they, they, they just they just talked for an hour. You can't give them three. <laughs> actually, <laughs> my, my, my bosses are probably watching. If they not, just poured their heart yeah, out probably. for us. <laughs> yeah, you know, Jesus. Yeah. I'm going to abstain and say every single one of them. Son of a... Oh, God I love them all equally. Cool. Well, for you, Sean also recommends 7-Eleven. No, actually, no. No kidding, though. 7-Eleven uh, uh, yeah, and what? 7-Eleven. Yeah. <laughs> Kidder and Car 7-Eleven. Yeah. Carl's exactly. Market, the best for beer. But no, yeah. Uh, if, if you guys are in town, obviously... Uh, S send us a tweet and we'll we'll show you around for sure, uh, cool. because we 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 love. That. I mean, Ben and I frequent that area too often, and we 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 like some more sidekicks and getting in trouble, you know, with with other people. So it'd be cool. Great. I'm but, the type of cool people, so something like that. When you, when you put that out, I will hit you up because I I yeah, same I love being shown an area that I don't know that well. I love it, like showing all like oh this done. is the get this stuff and, and whatnot. So wait, oh yeah, I mean I, I, honestly. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do, I mean, and, and we, we can even videotape it for the for the show. We we I mean we can do whatever. We can do all sorts of weird weird shit. But yeah, no, I mean anytime. <laughs> I, I'm not just saying it. We'll we'll do we'll, we'll make it happen for sure. But uh, I guess that's gonna have to do it. Um, so, I, geez, I, I I wish we could stay on for another three hours. But I know the ladies are probably looking at you like we gotta get going. And thanks <laughs> and thanks so much for joining us too. Like, yes. Seriously, thanks for having us. This is really yeah. Fun. That was a lot of fun. Thanks, yeah. guys. Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll raise a glass to you guys uh, and the entire team at Bissell for uh, more more future success and and just just killing it. So congratulations and continued success. Cheers. 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 We'll see you next week. Bye.